let me make a preliminary statement so people understand the context. Okay. Okay. Pre pre preliminary statement is that I have been read into classified military material. Okay. Now, you're going to just have to take my word for it because like David Grush, um, uh, you know, I've, I've given my word not to reveal my source, how I got the information, and you don't have to believe me, okay? But I'm going to tell you what I think is the truth based on information, you know, currently classified information that I shouldn't have gotten, but I have, all right? And since I've never signed, you know, I'm not like Grush, I haven't signed anything. I haven't, I've never signed anything. I could do anything I want. I'm a free agent. Okay. And uh, the, the information I have would blow everybody out of the water in terms of what's going on in Washington. So in any case, so take it or leave it. But I'm going to tell you what I know to the best of my knowledge that I would be willing to, um, you know, testify under penalty of perjury, Danny, you know, in, in a, in a, in a if I was subpoenaed, say, by the Senate or the Congress, uh, everything I'm saying now, I would say under, under uh, penalty of perjury. But I cannot reveal, you know, like I cannot reveal my source right now because people's lives would be endangered, like, well, like what Grush says, okay? So that's it. Okay, so let, let's proceed from that, from there. Okay, okay. And, and hopefully people can read this. And you know what? I can zoom in even further. Yeah. There we go. Look at that. There we go. Okay. Yeah. So state it anyway, state it anyway. Yeah. So this this is uh this is from Reddit. I'll, I'll just kind of preface this for the you know for for all of the audience folks here. Um, so on Reddit it says the GRE Grush interview is Grush's best interview so far. Here are the key points they went through. And uh so so number one here, I'll highlight the number of retrieved crafts in the USA's possession is in the double digits. Okay, I only know about one. Okay. I know one for sure. Okay. Uh, so then, then and he said, "What I can say, what I can say about the one I know about, the one I know about for sure is totally consistent with what Philip Corso said in his uh, book, The Day After Roswell, okay. and it exactly corresponds to what uh, Rick Doty uh, calls the Cardinal Three. You know, it's like thirty feet, weighs about thirty-four hundred pounds. It's got three seats inside. All that, you know, all that stuff." All that stuff, um, I can confirm, you know, with, with very high degree of confidence, like 95% confidence, uh, more 99% confidence that the, that the firsthand source of this intelligence to me is telling me the truth. And it's not, it's something that, something that my source worked on. Hands okay. on. Okay. <laughs> all right. Okay. All right. So let's, let's go down number two. Yeah. Okay. Events have been documented occurring since before the 1930s. So, well, and, and yeah, I, well, yeah, well, we know that. I mean, everybody knows that. That's no news to anybody, right? I mean, you know, it goes yeah. back to the Bible. Okay, let's go on to the next one. Okay. Okay. And, and Grush himself, I, I did see the interview. I watched the interview twice. Grush yeah. himself, uh, backpedaled on a few of these italy and germany may have become allies during world war ii due to events surrounding an italian uap retreat okay i i don't i don't know whether that particular um you know allegation is true or not but what i do know a fairly high degree of confidence is that there uh, was a crash during the mussolini's time and in fact there's a lot of activity uh, in that area even today, and um, uh, and uh, and oddly enough, my 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 cousin Margarita Sarfati, at the time, uh, was close, very close with Marconi, who uh, ran the investigation uh, for Mussolini at that time. So um, I don't know if if they, I don't think that's why they became allies, and that's a much more complex. Yeah. Issue. Well, but, and and again, even even David Grush said may he stressed may have, so he backpedaled a little yeah, on that, yeah. and that's fine, so, right? That's ancient yeah, history. Yeah. So. But but definitely, but definitely, uh, I, there was a, I'm pretty sure uh, that there was a Roswell type crash in Italy uh, around 1933. Okay, uh, so let me see. And number four, I think, is Lockheed Martin is in possession of retrieved UAPs. 
Again, I, I have no direct knowledge one way or the other. I have no reason to doubt it, but let's go on. Okay. Uh, 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 former Nevada Senator Harry Reid yeah. was aware of a UAP crash retrieval program. Well, you know, that's, I don't have any direct knowledge about that, but that's kind of like, yeah, well known. Yeah. Well, and I, Harry Reid was very keen on this from what yeah, I've read. Yeah. Uh, let me see. Foreign intelligence agencies have breached our UAP reverse engineering programs. I have no, okay. I have no doubt about that. <laughs> I, you know what? I, I just, I do a lot of defense interviews. Foreign intelligence agencies have breached our pretty much everything programs. I mean, there, there isn't much that, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, let me see. So David Grush alludes to the USA's adversaries having their own UAP crash retrieval yeah, programs. Yeah, well, uh, yeah, that's for sure. Okay. Okay. Well, that, I mean, and that's, no, I mean, that's nobody's notable. Surpri nobody's surprised by that. Okay. Uh, let me see. Grush says that USA is aware of other countries that are in possession of multiple craft. <laughs> well, given the stupidity of some of the people who are in the government associated with this project, I'm not sure. But if they were competent and not stupid, I think uh, the answer would be yes. Okay. Uh, let me see. Biden <laughs> is aware of UAP crash retrieval programs. I don't think Biden's aware of anything. I was going to say, unless he forgot, he may have forgotten, <laughs> right? That Reagan-esque memory. But yeah. Uh, okay. All right. Now this one, this one I have. Okay. Now this one. Uh, Six-year UAP disclosure plan yeah. from 24 to 2030 is being considered right now as part of the Schumer Amendment. And, yeah. and you had sent out an email. There's this back and forth on that. Maybe they will stop this. Maybe they're going to pull this, even though the NDAA 2024 was was voted on. So I okay. I don't well, that's that's uh, that's Steve Bassett. That's Steve Bassett worried about. But my position is not the same as Steve. My position is that this six year plan, and maybe it's a ten year plan. This is basically the plan that Colonel, uh, what's his name, Carl Nell gave at Gary Nolan's Stanford, uh, uh, you know, Soul Foundation thing the, the other day. And uh, it, it's irrelevant. It's, it's, you know, it's, it's, I make an analogy. You know, it's like when, would you rather deal with the United States Post Office or with Amazon <laughs> over your mail? The post office is really nice where I live. Oh yeah, well, well right. but <laughs> I'm kind of making I'm making a joke, you know. Yeah, but I know. The I'm, thing I'm is that, the thing is this: what I'm saying is that whenever the government tries to do anything, they usually don't do it very well. Yeah. The private industry it does it better, and yeah. right now they're so behind. And I don't want to get too much into you know the uh, personal details on it, but the point is that. Um, Colonel Nell, I mean, I'm sure he's a nice man, but he's basing his assumptions. His assumptions are false. His premises are false. It's all yeah. based on the idea that they don't understand the technology. They don't understand what, you know, how, what really what's going on. That's a, and they're hoping to enlist academics, you know, you know and, 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 and to figure it out. The point is we have to, we already, we have figured it out. We understand the basics of what's going on. We know where to look. Yeah, but, yeah. But, there's but, there's an information, there, or there's a, what would you call a culture gap, right? There's a there's a well, knowledge yeah, sharing I, I, gap. I, I call it a, an intelligence gap. Yeah. <laughs> but, One okay. hand doesn't know what the other hand is doing. Well, yeah. okay, so, so let me... So let the, me... Point is, the point is we don't need it. So the point is the disclosure's already happened. Disclosure's come and gone. It's just that people don't, you know, people don't see what's in front of them. And, okay. But but the important point is that there are now private groups, uh, and in some cases foreign groups like the Russians. You know, I know the the Russians invited me to Moscow. I didn't, you know. But so so the, the people are going ahead and working on this stuff, and and there's even uh, there's even you know the Lawrence Livermore Lab is testing my particular approach to it in their warp fusion reactor. So. Uh, what uh, the six-year program is, is is irrelevant. It's it's too little, too late, and it's not needed. Well, we, let, already, we, we already know. Let me go on to okay. let me go on to this one. Uh, yeah. Grush hints that Mike Rogers and Mike Turner are bought out by aerospace contractors and blocking UAP disclosure plan, and that's the Schumer. Uh, well, I, that, I, don't, I don't know about that. I, I don't know about that either. Uh, yeah. Yeah, some of this is pretty granular data. Yeah. Let, let me see. Uh, Grush is a proponent of disclosure and believes it will benefit reverse engineering efforts. That's yeah, well, we all, given, we, all, right? 
we're, yeah. we're all on that page, right? <laughs> Uh, yeah, so uh, he, Grush says that he is one hundred percent certain that we're not alone in the universe. Yeah, and so am I, of course. And I think, oh, but I think okay. almost everybody here is already, you know, that's preaching yeah. to the choir. Yeah, yeah, I know. If you're watching this video, you probably agree. Yeah. Uh, let me see. Grush says this phenomena has been occurring for thousands of years. Obviously, yes. You know, if, if I. We can get into some more detail on that if people have questions about that. I, I, if, if, yeah, if I could, if I could interject, yeah, I mean, there are different approaches, right? Different people believe different things, but I think that this is one of the biggest paradigm changes is that, is that not only has this been going on, but this has been going on for a very long time. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And, and I, I think that that's good. Like they, there are all these concerns about, you know, well, people will panic. We're being invaded or the world's well, no, no, this has been going on possibly as long as the human race has been around maybe longer so yeah you know nothing has changed we're just becoming more aware right yeah uh let me see so okay next grush says the leading government and military officials refer to the beings as extraterrestrial in origin so i, I, I big okay. deal yeah. Well, I think that goes to like, so you have talked about time travelers. That's been, yeah. that's been something you've talked about, right? Which may or may not be from earth in a different time. Um, Hal Pudoff well, I, has I, talked I, about ultra terrestrials. Uh, yeah. So. And Mike Masters, you know, Mike Masters talks about um, was time extra, travelers. Uh, yeah. He calls them extra tem temporal, temporals. Tem yeah. Tem extra temporal. Okay, but I got a direct contact with you know with one that said it was from the future, and it predicted what was going to happen, which happened. So I know, you know, I'm a contactee, right? Yeah. And they said, you know, everything they said was going to happen is happening. So there we have it. What's yeah. happening there? Now, um, another way to look at that too is if if I was in the military, I just call them all extraterrestrial. It doesn't matter. I just you know. Little green men. That's, well, here's the thing. Well, well, I no, mean, it's, it's more. It, it, yeah, yeah, okay. Uh, it's more. It's it's more than that because the physics says it has to be. Uh, yeah. Time. This, if you control gravity, then you control time. I mean, it's just physics. It's just, that's Einstein general relativity theory, and I, we can get into more detail how that works if people are interested. If we have time, we may. Have, okay. But let's go on the next question. Okay, so Grush points to the idea that beings from retrieved craft may not have been sentient. Well, like, well again, that, uh, you know, it depends what you mean by sentient consciousness, and that's physics. And remember that the Central Intelligence Agency 50 years ago recruited me and, you know, Hal Putoff and Russ Tog, all these guys, that's some still around, to work on the two problems. One problem was what is yeah. consciousness? That's what David Kaiser's book, How the Hippie Say Physics, all about what is consciousness, and and uh, how do the flying saucers work? Okay, and after fifty years, now we have a pretty good handle on it. We understand both aspects of the phenomenon. You know, the high strength, the good, the one good thing Eric Davis has done with Jacques Vallée is the paper that he wrote with the Jacques, you know, on the High Strangers paper. That that you know, based on the Skinwalker Ranch. That's good stuff. Yeah. And also uh, what Hal Putoff put recently wrote about, you know, with the extra dimensional, you know, his, his yeah, general yeah. outline. That's all, yeah, that's all correct. I, I agree with all that. Okay, so let me let me go here. People in government tried to destroy Grush's image when he attempted to whistleblow on the secret government reverse engineering program. Yeah, well, we know that's true, but that's politics. That's, you know. Y yeah, yeah. yeah. But we, that's and true. and then someone leaked his medical records as well, yeah, which yeah, yeah. I, I can't, I don't know. That must be an enormous, I mean, that's a HIPAA violation. That's an enormous oh, sure penalty. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. Uh, yeah. let me see. Government entities destroyed one of Grush's colleagues' careers as a show of force after targeting Grush. Yeah, well, I don't know about that, of course. I don't, yeah. I don't know about that either. Uh, let me see. On two occasions, individuals of unknown origin explained to Grush and his wife they could touch them at any time, which is clearly an allusion to violence. Yeah. Well, again, I have no reason to doubt what Grush would say about that. Yeah. I, you know, I, that, doesn't, that doesn't surprise me. Uh, let me see. Grush stated that other publicly well-known officials got similar threats at the same time he did. 
well, again, you yeah, know, we have I, reason to disbelieve them. Why, you know, I don't have any, you know, that I don't have any personal intelligence about yeah, that. Yeah, I, I, I can't speak to that. Yeah. Uh, let me see. The Atomic Energy oh. Act of 1954 yeah. is the origin to all NHI information being classified. Yes, yes. And that's, this, this is important. This connects with me personally because, you know, remember my professors built the atomic bomb. My professors were the, the A team for Oppenheim, you know, Hans Bethe, uh, Phil Morrison, and Robert Wilson, all these guys. So, and I, you know, I was a student, an undergraduate student at Cornell only like 10 years after the, you know, like in, I, I, yeah. I got to Cornell in 1956. So let me know. Well, and from what I have heard, and I could be mistaken about this, yeah. but the classification for this is under the DOE, right? because it's nuclear related or something yeah. along those lines. And, 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 yes. And again, I don't have any, you know, really, you know, uh, direct knowledge of that, but, but it's no accident that I was recruited into this whole program as a kid, basically, you know, and sent to Cornell where the nuclear, all these nuclear guys were. Okay. I mean, I was there, I was helping Phil Morrison, cleaning his office as you know, an undergraduate when he was writing the paper with Kokoni on contacting extraterrestrial intelligence you know, with the 21 centimeter line. Okay. Well, let, so let me go down to this next one. Yeah. Uh, he says that UAP craft emit yeah. nuclear energy. That's not a very precise description. Okay. But so. now I now I have, yeah, now I can explain that now. See, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. The way that is, see that, that is, of course, most people, they don't understand the physics enough. Yeah. That's a signature of warp drive. That's warp drive. That's gravity. That's time travel. Because so you're talking about red shifting, blue shifting, right? The blue, that's the blue shift. Yeah. That's the blue shift. In order to get the lift, you know, the repulsion, the anti-gravity creates a blue shift. The blue shift will ionize radiation and cause radiation sickness, like what happened allegedly happened at the Skinwalker yeah. Ranch. Travis Taylor himself says he got sick from it. Okay. And that's what Gary, no when Kit Green, the CIA guy, doctor, uh, gave all that uh, uh, blood information to Gary Nolan to analyze, those are all military guys who've gotten too close and have been exposed to the anti-gravity blue ship, which, by the way, Jack, I'm the one who predicted that. I'm the one who explained that. Nobody yeah. else. Yeah. Well, and, and these are conventional. And again, for people who don't know your work, there probably aren't many because your work is very prolific. You've been doing it forever. Again, you are one, for people who don't know, you are one of the top, top, top experts in UAP physics, right? You're like the guy. So, in in terms of the physics, is, is there this, someone else who's that? Well, I, you know, I, I, I just, I don't want to, I don't want to stroke your ego too much, but, but, um, you know, but so, yeah, I mean, these are relativistic so, effects. You've predicted this. Another one that, that I think you agreed with was, um, in, there was, um, in the Puerto Rico video, there was what appeared to be gravitational lensing, right? Yeah. Yeah. Which is also, all, that's the shape shifting. Shape the shape shifting, right? Many yeah. people have reported that gravitational lensing. If you're modifying gravity to that extent, you're likely yeah. to have these effects. Oh, yeah. Um, let me so see. That's all, so these are all markers of uh, warp drive, and warp drive means time travel, by the way. Okay. And there's one other thing: the reverse Doppler. Yeah, you know that that if if the if the uh, if the, uh, if, the if a warp craft is coming toward you, you're going to see more like a. And instead of uh, the, the Doppler motion of blue shift, you'll see an anomaly that looks redder than it should be. And yeah. likewise, the other way around. So, that, that's, uh, a, so that's, a, that's an easy signature. That's an easy thing for them to measure. Yeah, yeah. Just observing the frequency spectra of these uh, machines in motion. And you can easily t tell if it's warp drive by, by the anomalous frequency shifts. I mean, that shouldn't be difficult to do. They probably, or hopefully, they have this kind of information, but it's classified. But in any case, you know, I predicted it just from Einstein's general theory of relativity. It's, it's, yeah. it's not. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm, I'm completely there. Everyone that I know who studied the physics on this is completely there with you. 
Um, so let me see. Let's go down. Grush claims that senior officials in government tested the waters, quote unquote, with the yeah. populace in the past to gauge public perception of the phenomena, but never had a plan for disclosure. Well, he's probably right, but we know, I, I mean, you know, this goes back to H.G. Uh, Wells, not H.G. Wells, to Orson Wells in 1939. Or yeah, War of, the, War of the Worlds, right? Yeah, yeah all that stuff. Well, but, what, what, but what is testing now? So there was the Spielberg movie, Close Encounters. There was the, yeah. that claim. I'm hoping yeah. that was the test and not Independence Day. Independence Day would not be the right test. So. Well, I don't know. Well, here's the point. All these, all of the above, all of the above. <laughs> Here's the general point that, that people have to understand. The physics of warp drive, time travel, you know, paranormal, telepathy, all that stuff, the physics is pretty elementary. That means that any civilization anywhere in the universe, if they manage to get to a certain point, are going to discover this technology. You know, as soon as this, basically, as soon as they discover relativity and quantum theory, you're, you're basically almost there. It's just a matter of, you know, 50 years, maybe 100 years. So there are many different groups out there. It is like Star Wars, you know. There are many different groups. I, I used to kind of laugh, what was it? Some of these guys, um, I forget their names, you know, saying there are all these different types of ETs. Well, actually, that's true. I know from my classified briefings, I know there are at least three different ones. There are three I know, I know three for sure. Okay. okay. Three different different ones. Let me let not me go down here. Wait, not not all of them are friendly. We have a problem, Houston. We have a problem. Okay. Let me go down here to the next one. We we can all return right. to this because we, we've yeah. got some extra time, I think. So yeah. the government is in possession of multiple different types of biologics as well as multiple different types of crafts. This yeah, goes okay. to what you were saying. Okay. Yeah, this goes to what I'm saying. And 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 it depends what government are we talking about. Okay, I'm not gonna yeah. say what government yeah. are we talking about. Um okay. and, there's um, a cliffhanger. <laughs> yeah. Which I can't, I can't, I can't say. Uh, um I'd say governments, yes. Go okay, governments. Yeah, and, yeah. and the answer is yeah. I mean, I know I know I have some intel on that. I can't give too much detail, but the answer is basically yes. Well it I, I mean, I this is just speculation, but but Thor, the the gentleman who did UAP theory, who was talking gravitational lensing, one yeah. of the points that he made was he said if if the universe is full of life, as the Drake equation suggests, if if it has multiple civilizations, um, as you've said, they they can probably travel faster than light, travel through time. Earth right now, the developmental stages that humanity is going through, is probably one of the most interesting places in the universe. Right. Yeah, There's yeah. no it wouldn't be a surprise that everybody would be here just seeing what's going on. Yeah. So. And also, you know, there's the um, Hastings, you know, the guy, Robert Hastings, all this stuff with the news. Yes. Yes. Yeah. And it's no accident. It's no accident that I'm involved in this because my professors built the nuclear bombs. Right. And and so it's so and, and so it's no accident that they were also into UFOs. And it's no accident that I was recruited, you know into this project many years ago. I mean, I've been working on this for a long time. This is no, you know, and it's all now happening. Yeah. It's all so coming, let, me, you know. let me go to, let me go to the next one. We've got, I think we have four left. So this is number four. Okay. Grush describes the topic of interaction between humans and non-human intelligence as an area he can't discuss in great detail, but hints at the idea it could have taken place. Okay. So this I could have done. it's taking place. Of course, it's taking. Uh, well, I, I, I almost it's... wonder if he's referring to that famed what, what there was supposed to be some meeting or treaty in the Eisenhower years. Right? Oh, I don't know. Well, maybe yeah. I'm sure. Yeah, I, I don't doubt. Yeah. You know, I don't doubt any of that. I mean, I think you know, there's probably all that is probably true. But I have information on that sort of thing, very detailed information on that sort of thing which I can't go into detail on, but the answer is yes. And it's a lot stranger. And that, then you think, then I can, uh, let's see what I can say without, um, um, uh, the, pa the high, the high strangeness aspect. Okay. It's very much part of it. Okay. okay. The, no, yeah, the, I, the, I won't. Well, no, no, but I can, you know, all the stuff that Russell Tog, the remote viewing that put up, all that stuff is all real psychokinesis, the Uri Geller stuff, that's all very much part of the UFO. 
phenomenon. And I have de a lot of details that I can't get into, but it's very, um, it, it, I, actually, I, you know, the, the, the paranormal with the paranormal part of this thing, that's the part that will probably scare a lot of people. Uh, if yeah, and, and actually, if I could interject for a moment, I've yeah. done I did in my interview series, right, several hundred experts on various fields. And in when it comes to UAP, that is one of the most consistent things. Um, I did an interview with Gary Nolan, and he reported it. And I the, the thing that caught me was he said, why is that happening? He's like, I have no clue, but it is. But what, what's interesting about that is you have, uh, like, yourself has reported it, Dr. Eric Davis, uh, Dr. Hal Pudoff, Dr. Gary Nolan. This is a consistent report. Is some oh, kind also of... John Ramirez, CI John Ramirez, and Jim Simivan. Yeah. See, they're all and and um, and Rick Doty. Rick Doty also, yeah. You know, so, um, so uh, yeah. So this part of it, the mind control part. Okay, you know there was what the, there's the uh, the two slides I keep putting up on the internet. There's the this the now six observables. That's the the hardware, the nuts and bolts, right? The warp drive, the time travel, the mechanics. But there's also slide nine about mind control. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. The paranormal, the high strangers. And I should I should mention for the audience that you you added an observable. There are five. There were five. Louis Elizondo had ATEP had five. You added one, and I forgot what the yeah, six was. Yeah, I forgot was, exactly. But... I, I think we actually Julian Gaffray is the one who actually did it. But yes, that that refers to Travis Taylor saying he's getting. You know, that's the the blue ship, the anti gravity blue ship. Yeah. That's the stuff uh, that Kit Green has given to Gary Nolan to the blood of all the, you know, like the Havana syndrome type sy symptoms. That's the, that's the ionization, that, that's the uh, radiation sickness basically from the blue shift from the warp drive. Uh, so, so let me go down here. Grush yeah. states that recorded documentation of non-human intelligence goes quote unquote, pretty far back in history. Yeah, well, of course. Yes. Yeah. Uh, you know, and I'm seeing stuff online now, I mean, paintings, right. That, that they've been there forever. Okay you know yeah. but oh yeah yeah so it's it's pretty far back there grush wouldn't be surprised if humans were genetically engineered well i would say i i would say almost for sure i'm like 90 percent certain we were see that's that and that's also one reason why they're here but um the whole garden of eden myth well what that was you know it's like what maybe six thousand a ten thousand whatever it wasn't that long ago it wasn't that long ago that the uh the time travelers from our future came down and took us, you know, some uh, ancestors and did some CRISPR genetic tweaking of the DNA code and made, you know, because suddenly there's writing. When did writing appear? Was it six, that 10,000? You know, when did, when did all that happen? It happened fairly recently, right? Yeah. Yeah. There's, I don't there, know there, are time scale. there are these, uh, uh, there are these discontinuous changes that really cannot be, understood in terms of ordinary random Darwinian natural selection. And that's intervention. We have all the technology now. We could do it. We almost do it. I mean, they're doing it at Stanford and all that. I mean, Gary Nolan could do it, right? Yeah. Now, so I, I had asked Gary about that. And what he'd said was if there was obvious genetic tampering, it would have been detected by the many, 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 you know, gene scanning technologies that are out there. But, but in some ways, I felt like that that begs the question because number one, in some ways you have to be looking for it to find it. And, and in other ways, um, like for instance, hybridization modifies the genome, leaving no, no, you know, yeah. there are ways that it could be done that wouldn't be obvious. There may be different ways of doing it that are less obvious. So I didn't feel like well, he had thing a, is that's interesting, but the, and they have, they actually tried to look, have they taken fossils? I don't think, you they, know, have. From primitive I don't think they have. Yeah. You know, they haven't, if you don't look, you're not going to see it. Right. But um, Exa exactly. Yeah. Uh, but, but also Gary himself was talking about this, you know, this thing that the high functioning have this kind of, uh, I forget, you know, it, it, there's this part of the brain where there's a lot of complexity that most people don't have. And, and I heard Gary oh, Nolan yeah, call I, it uh, a genetic mutation. You know, it's, uh, that it's well, probably a genetically it, engineered mutation. So the point is, um, I don't think there's any question about that. Okay. My, my, own, my own view. That's my own view. That, yeah, what, we're genetically and, engineered. And then our, our final question of the day, uh, David Grush claims remote viewing is real 
and that yes. it might be related to certain evolutionary traits in the brain that some people possess, which is exactly well, what you just said. Yeah, well, that's what Gary's talking about. And the point is this, that we know, we understand now the mechanism of consciousness. We understand it, you know, and, and generally speaking, you know, we understand the physical mechanism. It's not difficult. That's part of the pro project that the CIA asked me to work on, right? What is conscious? How these things fly? That we understand the quantum mechanics of it. And to the point now that we can start uh, making uh, sentient machines, you know, uh, artificial intelligence that has the same consciousness we have by simply imitating, you know, using the, you know, the hammer off stuff, the microtubules, making these nanoscale um, quantum dot artificial neural nets and pumping them into what are called further condensates. And then that should be, that's what we are. We yeah. understand so that we're conscious. Okay. And so, so all that is coming and it's going to come very quick. I think very fast. Let you know, me, unless we have uh, a nuclear war, of course. Unless have a nuclear, unless, you know. Yeah, so let me very quickly, while I'm sharing, I'm going to put that up there. This, I believe, is the interview. Joe Rogan, sorry for yeah. Uh, yeah. forgetting his first name earlier. I, I do listen occasionally. Um, so I, I believe this is the interview that they're talking about. And yeah. uh, I will put a link to this in chat. And then now what I'll do is take this down. Now, Jack, do you want to bring uh, Mark and the guys in and go over this more well, in detail? If, if somebody has questions, I'll go, yeah. Let, okay, you know, yeah, let's 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 do that. Okay, so I'm going to take that down. And you know what? We should we should at least give Jack a uh, hand. Dr. Salvatore Oops. Pice. And that's, Dr. that's the wrong me here. There we go. Okay, sorry about that. Okay. I have the guys here. Everybody, please. Yeah, All right, Dr. Yeah, yeah. Jack Sarfati, an applause. Yeah. All right, well, let's just okay. get to the question. Does anybody have any? any do, do you guys have any questions for Jack? Okay, and I'm pasting <laughs> this. Um, I, I, I have a question. Yeah. Um, could you go into a little greater depth on the most recent thing that you guys were just talking about on the consciousness side of things um, and, and what your research or experience in the past has suggested well okay that. well I, if you just go on my twitter i always give there's a paper now by um what's his name the finnish guy uh pavo pilkin he's written a review paper he's a, a, an eminent cognitive scientist in helsinki and sweden and he's written a, a review paper in december of 2022 about a year ago called um yeah it's on my website I mean, just look up uh what is it uh, the 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 brain as a quantum measuring device and in that review paper section seven he describes what i've done in in a in a in a in a accessible way you know if you're not a physicist it's for other psychologists you know people and he describes without the math uh, the quantum mechanics of consciousness that that uh, we've discovered it it basically uh, uh, takes off from the hammer off microtubule theory. Uh, it's not quite the same, you know. It, 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 it's not really Penrose's gravity theory, but it, there's, uh, yeah, I, there's a precise mechanism. Okay, which uh, which um, I predict explains consciousness, and which can be tested because we can build machines now, nanoscale uh, artificial neural nets that will have the same kind of consciousness that we have. But of course, that's also a function of the, the input sensors and the output motors that they have. But, you know, we're talking, uh, 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 it's pretty interesting. You see, this gets into Sam Altman. You know, the Jack, all of a sudden, by the way, Sam Altman is my, is my next door neighbor here. He's, he lives next door to me. <laughs> I haven't met him yet. because he, well, he, he got rehired. Me. They they brought him back. Yes, they yes, brought him. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. And, uh, but, uh, so he's, uh, he's literally, we have a common boundary here. I mean, he's right in the next building that he owns. Uh, but he's hardly there. And I'm in London a lot, and Italy a lot of the time. So, but in any case, but he, if, if you read about, uh, there's this woman, uh, Pippa Malgram, Pippa Malgram. She has, she's on Substack. I've met her in London. And she's written a very interesting um analysis of what's been happening with Sam and his business and everything. But apparently, uh, uh, you know, Sam is getting into all this, um, 
He's getting to robots. He's actually going to be competing with Elon Musk and all this, you know. And uh, so uh, he's going to eventually, once he uh, be very interested in conscious AI, because that's the next step. The next step for, you know, all, all, all the artificial intelligence now is not conscious. And uh, you can make it conscious. <laughs> it's like Frankenstein. It's alive. It's conscious, okay? Uh, you can make it conscious by, by changing the hardware. It's, it's a hardware problem. And I basically know how to do it. You know, in principle, I know how to do it. So. Yeah, so there you go. It, well, uh, on that note, I mean, uh, if, if that answers the question, I wonder if we should move on to lab time then. It, okay. Does, and is that it? I, I think, yeah, I think, I think that was it. And, and, you know, and Jack, I will actually, I, I'll take that section of this and put it up on the YouTube channel as its own breakaway. Yeah, too, please. I, yeah. Okay. okay. Well, I, Jack, let, let me, let me thank you so much. And you're, you're more than welcome to stick around. We're going to go to lab. No, no, I, got, I, got, I got stuff I got to do. Okay. Okay. Well, thank yeah. you. Thank you again. It was definitely okay. an honor and a pleasure again, sir. Okay. Bye-bye. Okay.